You're watching BBN Tonight on your official UK sports station, LEX 18. Presented by Central Bank, the official bank of UK athletics. All right, welcome back to BBN Tonight. We're joined by the voice of the Wildcats now, Tom Leach. Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Was and your mic well, on? So the Cats had an opportunity to improve their conference resume on Saturday at Rupp Arena. Almost did, but just couldn't pull out uh, to close the game with Florida. Just your thoughts on how uh, those final couple minutes went in that one. You know, they had the lead at the last media timeout by one and gave up just a crucial three on Florida's next possession. Mm -hmm. It was just a, a real backbreaker. You know, they, they didn't, they got a couple of good looks for Mintz late down the stretch. If he hits either one of those, maybe they pull it out. Nobody's going to make them all. He's made more than his share of big shots. But the point is, they were able to execute well enough to get those two good shots. They didn't have the abundance of turnovers that we saw earlier in those final four-minute situations. So that was at least good. I think if Isaiah Jackson uh, stayed out of foul trouble, I think they would have won the game because he looked like the guy there in the second half when he played for an extended stretch that was best against that zone. He was very assertive. Uh, I think in one stretch, he accounted for 11 points on drives and free throws and then added three more when he threw a skip pass over to Toppin for a three. So those were things that they wanted to do to attack the zone, and he did them better than anybody else they were playing. And unfortunately, he couldn't stay out there long enough. <laughs> yeah, I feel like Isaiah needs to be on the floor for this team. So oh, I don't yeah. know what you do other than just say, don't foul. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hope for the best out there. All right, so Kentucky plays he, just he two more regulars. Like that, that. What's that? I was going to say, he needs to be like that great high school player who just does everything to avoid getting in foul trouble <laughs> because, you know, he's a great defensive presence, and now he's become probably their hardest guy to guard on mm -hmm. offense. Yeah, true. All right, Kentucky has just two more regular season games. They'll play at Ole Miss and then uh, uh, at home against South Carolina. Not going to add another non-conference opponent, so uh, these games basically become getting ready for an, an SEC tournament run. Yeah, and they uh, if they win two, I think they – likely would be uh, the sixth seed, which is playing late on Thursday night, but um, you would, uh, you know, have a, a little uh, better spot in the bracket maybe. I, it, you know, the, the, as, as, as we've seen with all these Kentucky games that have been close, uh, they can play with, with anybody in the league. So I think more so than seeding or anything, I just think they need, especially this one against Ole Miss, to get, uh, recapture some of that momentum you don't want to lose two in a row. Just this team has been knocked down a lot this season. And to their credit, they've continued to get back up and, and fight and play hard time and time again. But uh, you don't want to get knocked too down too many times. So I hope they can come back, bounce back, get a win against Ole Miss, get one against South Carolina. And at that point, you go into the tournament having won five of your last six if it plays out that way. And you mentioned right now, possibly looking at a six seed late Thursday night tip off in the SEC tournament, although they're, there are some scenarios, <laughs> maybe not some, but several scenarios that need to happen for Kentucky to possibly earn a double bye. Do you know any of those scenarios, and how could, I, how could that all unfold? Yeah, I, I was looking at those things before the game on Saturday, and they were pretty favorable. Uh, after the loss, uh, you know, in my mind, I kind of wrote it off, so I haven't looked at, at those two uh, Can't blame you know, any, any depth. So I, I don't know what all would – what what all planets would have to come into alignment for that to happen. So I think at this point, I would just like to see them pick up two wins this mm -hmm. week and wherever they are, they are, they would at least uh, go in feeling good about themselves, playing with confidence, all those things that we saw coming off that win at Tennessee. But we're saying there's a chance. We're saying they're telling me there's a chance. <laughs> all right, Tom, <laughs> this morning on the Leach Report, you had Goose Gibbons on. He had some interesting news uh, talking about his 1978 championship team. Yeah, he said they're working, uh, or they're, they're, I guess, have finished up a, a show now on the 78 uh, championship season. Goose and Rick Roby, James Lee, Mike Phillips, the four seniors there, and Kyle Macy and the Truman Clater, Jay Shidler, all that crew. And this is going to air, according to Goose, on um, Monday night after Selection Sunday, so March the 15th. I think on the SEC Network is where it'll uh, have its debut. So uh, I'm really looking forward to, to seeing that. Uh, hopefully... By that time, we know that Kentucky has overcome the, the odds and played themselves into the NCAA tournament. But if not, that would be uh, you know, a nice show to – well, it's going to be a nice show to watch either way, but 
uh, it would be especially nice if you knew Kentucky was going to be playing later that week, too. All right, Tom, thanks so much. Uh, we look forward to talking to you again next week, hopefully after two victories with Wildcats. <laughs> Let's see. Let's hope so. <laughs> Stay right there. We have more after this. You're watching BBN tonight.